Uh, good afternoon. On behalf of Kukrit uh, Redemix India Private Limited, I'm inviting all of you to listen to the webinar, Kukrit Webinar 33, and uh, listen to Dr. Uh, Dilip Kumar Pashupaleti. Uh, Garu is uh, from Hyderabad. Dr. Venkat Dilip Kumar Pasakaleti Garu is a faculty member at uh, Mahendra University Ecol Central A School of Engineering. He did his master's and PhD from International Institute of Information Technology, Hyderabad, IATM Hyderabad and has published uh, more than 100 uh, research papers. He has founded and started Center of Excellence, Center for Sustainable Infrastructures and Systems, CSIS, an interdisciplinary research center with the blend of civil engineering and computer science at Mahendra University. He is currently working on structural health assessment and monitoring using wireless sensors for reinforced concrete structures, steel structures, and heritage structures apart from retrofitting and rehabilitation. He has received Best Researcher Award in 2017 in Malaysia, and he has research collaborations with many universities from Germany, Portugal, Malaysia, and South Korea. He has been doing a lot of field work, working with uh, many industries on retrofitting, health monitoring, and a lot of other things related, actually. We are very fortunate to have him today to speak on this uh, subject, which is understanding structural health in India, a need. And we welcome you, sir. Dr. Dilip Dilikumar Prasipaleti Garu for addressing our August gathering who have come on this uh, day in the afternoon to hear from you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Please, you can start your session, sir. Namaste. Uh, great evening, all. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Kaushik Garu, for a brief introduction. In fact, it is always my pleasure to share whatever we have been doing as a part of academic industry and research. So uh, once again, uh, very good evening to all. I uh, hope you all are, are doing good and, and healthy, especially in this pandemic uh, time. Times uh, have changed a lot, especially in last two years. So one of the best way to interact with all of them is this webinars. So. I said myself, I'm heading one of the research center at Mahendra Ecol Centrale, which is Center for Sustainable Infrastructure and Systems. And we are largely working on sustainable infrastructure with the help of a uh, system. So, so this is my topic today. And uh, understanding structural health in India, this we felt around nine to 10 years back. And the presentation actually has most of the pictures are taken by us while our journey when we are moving all over the India. So anyway, so coming uh, to a small note, of course, uh, this is not uh, something which uh, I've been uh, uh, taking it some, some notes or not from any office files, but largely the presentation is largely based on certain observations and thoughts. Of course, I'm not the only one. We also have a team which I'll show at the end of this presentation. The outline of this presentation, uh, I, I just feel you all to feel relax sit down wherever you are it's largely pictorial so you don't really need to write anything or have but you are almost uh, always welcome to ask any kind of questions in throughout this presentation especially then you can ask introduction will be very very fundamental it's just like you all know but i just try to put it in some simple terms so that i'll connect this with the actual uh, lecture so we talk about fundamentals types of structures what's our education and of course deterioration Second case studies, of course, we've been, uh, we've did more than 500 structures till now, um, largely, mostly bridges and uh, 
in that also mostly are rcc structures health assessment and couple of bridges right now we are doing and monitoring using wireless sensors we did couple of residential structures and few rcc buildings and heritage structures uh, that i would definitely would like to show as a case study and uh, these are very specific case studies and we found out reason why they have they are not in very good health so that could be avoided if we thought okay third uh, of course this is our main motive is research so i largely as a team in the industry we do a lot of research and try to contribute in the area of this health assessment and monitoring of course uh, conclusion i will not be able to conclude because we just started our journey from the past couple of years in understanding analysis and uh, assessment and retrofitting designs so we will tell you in short what exactly mean by this presentation so introduction uh, always tell whenever i start my uh, class is simple i tell one of the most fundamental thing what we miss is uh, trying to understand about a material which i call it as a science science in simple is understanding the nature as it is of course i'll connect this with the current presentation as well so it's largely observations the one who has very good observations they would definitely have a very good uh, scientific background so science is the most and foremost important uh, even for civil engineering like any other engineering engineering of course the same thing i did connect to this because this is a natural waterfall and this is a dam a dam is one of the biggest man made structure and it's one of the heaviest structure apart from pyramids and of course it it, it undergoes lot of uh, high static and dynamic loads as well of course during an earthquake it could be a very much prone to damage so engineering is all about an application of science for our comfort and uh, i call engineering is at its best when we have a creativity okay a crude engineering is one way and creative engineering is another way third technology technology uh, is one thing which will help you in making things faster parallel precise accurate or robust so in simple uh, of course you all know right right now there are a lot of mobiles which can see your face and detect like facebook wherever you take images it put it will tell who are the people who are there in that picture that's a technology can this the same thing can be applied to civil engineering right now yes this is applied in the construction field so technology is has made of our life little more simpler faster parallel and robust okay and uh, technology is largely day based on logical that's why irrespective of whatever brain branch we are with a very good aptitude and logical yes we all can become software engineer of course i'm not talking about negative effects uh, apart from technology i'm just trying to tell how these things can help uh in uh, structural health assessment of course the last thing of course i'll not talk much this is management management in simple resources there are a lot of resources there is a lot of demand and there is a distribution the thought is all about management management is understanding the resources where they are we try to understand where it is demand and we distribute like india uh if i ask you a question or if you try to understand a question how many number of structures currently existing which are built with rcc of course i wouldn't want to give an answer you can just think about that how many structures in india right now are built by rcc so you can think in percentage of course management is all about leader with that very fundamental if science engineering and technology are very good then of course we can come up with this this is a very recent structure of course it's there in delhi and uh, uh, this is akshardham completely built with stone and of course this is this is a stone and this is a different metal this is an infosys pune of course it has got a lot of glass steel and composite structure you can see the geometry and third of course this is uh, uh, i'm sure you all know this is a chatrapati shivaji terminal and here the all three images show a different materials which were used in construction that understanding that material is called science and this all this geometry and technique of construction is all about engineering engineering so these are three beautiful structures so let me just go back only couple of slides two or three slides just to tell you a brief of indian india has got a lot of different types of structures 
this is a lot of this is gateway of india in mumbai this is sachmir fort jaipur and this is uh, butna temple and kajra these are all different structures which are largely built majorly built with stone okay there are different types of binding materials either it is a metal or lime or anyway it's a rock uh, locking mechanism stone itself but these are different structures uh, which are called heritage or historical structures and there are few of these structures which are demolished and the, which are also deformed uh, like konark temple which was demolished uh, and uh, if you go if you have been to varangal this is the southern part of india uh, this is a ramappa temple which the kind of foundation right now is undergoing certain kind of settlement of course there are a lot of heritage structures which have been at a, a which are not completely demolished but in a deteriorated stage or non uniform settlement has taken place transition structures of course like uh, grandfather has built a ground floor son has built an uh, mid floor and uh, uh, um, son or is built in another it's like three generations are building this this largely we find in uh, northern part of india northeastern part of india where we have uh, different types of materials in the same structure so this is like you can see this is uh, very famous in uh, himachal pradesh ground floor is made by stone first floor is brick and third floor is wood and brick and wood and mud something like that these are all called transition structures based on generation all these structures have evolved during uh, during a lot of 100 years or 200 years or 500 years so this is stone structure and of course this is all stone and uh, wood and different types of stone sizes ground floor you have a bigger size and first floor you have smaller size now advanced structures of course like this is a core structure i'm sure you know load bearing structure or frame structure or core structure or we have in a pre engineered buildings we have pre cast structures this is complete glass uh, steel and of course these are all different types of structures which we call them as advanced structures because the construction is faster uh, we have reduced a lot of dead weight on these structures so either of this can be largely core structure or frame structures and we also have steel structures but why are we why am i saying all these structures our education has largely because i am from an academic background and uh, what we truly see is uh, what we truly dream is to be a part of one of the as a civil engineer i just wanted to be a part of one of the big big project i wanted to see this project be executed from the ground uh, to one of the famous structures so we all dream to be part of very big projects and of course the last uh, is it has to be sustainable sustainable project either in terms of material or in terms of lighting or in terms of uh, designs of course we want all our structures to be sustainable whether exactly they are being implemented as sustainable or not is still a question mark until until we understand our civil engineering as simple as planning what did we learn in, in our engineering is planning and analysis design and impl implementation or execution after that we of course we dream that of becoming a good civil engineer great civil engineer we all learn these things this is very fundamental until such kind of structure is seen is this structure truly designed by an engineer or it was just built like that there are many such kind of structures which are standing in and around india as we were walking in india only for trying to have such and kinds of structures so question is if they are designed and if they are not designed who is the person who is guaranteeing the life of such structures life such structures so this is the second structure you can see question is are they healthy is there any need that we need to understand that all these structures can be healthy because 2001 Bridge earthquake has opened a lot of eyes for engineers, especially civil engineers, to focus a little bit more on earthquake engineering. But recently, I'm not sure if you all have shared and gone to the newspapers and news, everyday news. In last three years, I think more than 400 to 450 buildings have just collapsed. Uh, that is, that so 450 is a very big number for India. Either it could be because of largely deterioration, or its age, or even during the construction. <clears throat> so what is missing is we truly miss a doctor the doctor or an engineer who can tell that this structure is really healthy or not we don't have uh, engineers who can truly understand the nerve or uh, understand the nerve or who can really communicate with the structure and can tell whether the structure is healthy or not so we need uh, health engineers 
infrastructures. So civil engineering is not only about planning, analysis, design, and construction, but it largely deals with civilization of building and also its maintenance. Maintenance is something which was largely missing in the curriculum. So we had very big questions. So uh, where this actually, where did we miss this, the maintenance part? Let us see. So as said, question is, is India healthy from the structural point? So if you can see this picture, this is uh, taken uh, from a Mumbai. I'm sure you all would have seen. This is also available in Google. It will show the contrast of images. You could see 20 year old structure. Uh, you could see 10 year old structure and you can also see the slum area. So there's a lot of contrast in these structures. So when we see this image, can we just buy that image? Can we say these structures are healthy and these structures are very good or anything? Can we say like that? So AI is trying to bring such kind of a thing by visual inspection. Of course, NDT or sensors are also mandate in uh, supporting those results. But then yes, we are trying to understand this. So this is also so, so, sorry. This is also shown in BBC. One of the structure was collapsed in Bangalore during construction itself, and one structure has collapsed in uh, Karnal during after I think after 15 or 18 years. So this is between April and June 2013 year. Over 100 people were killed in building collapses in Mumbai. While between 2008 and 2012 there were 100 building collapses. I'm not adding recently. Because last year itself, there were around 48 or 49 during the rainy season all over the India. Okay. To add more, this is a new structure. Whereas this is an old structure and this is a new structure. And this is video is also available in YouTube. Uh, that if you type in YouTube building collapse, new building uh, collapse, then you can see this. So what has happened that in such a way that the building actually has, the building has started to sleep while construction. You can see this. So Bangalore building collapses. This is in February 2018 and it has killed three people. To intensify these doubts, when we travel to West Bengal, uh, Calcutta and all, we have seen most of these structures have a lot of greenery on them. Of course, these were not planted by people, but they were grown naturally. Few of the engineers believe that the roots actually strengthen the walls. Few engineers say that it is going to deteriorate the structure but we have seen largely if the plants or trees are actually growing on the structure especially on the concrete slabs and all it will deteriorate much faster every tree will start deteriorating the structure by percentage and added to this this is not a green roof garden but they have a lot of trees on this structure and largely largely even if any kind of city if you take any kind of city uh, this is also i've taken from the net but any kind of city the deterioration is largely starts from the sewage line or kitchen pipelines these pipelines are the hot spots of the deterioration so you can just travel any city and you can see these things and we went to Andaman Nicobar uh, because there was tsunami in 2004 and we went in 2018 and we just wanted to see after 14 years how were the structures are. But to our surprise, there were certain structures where still roots have seen and the demolish or the collapse or destruction of structures can still be seen after 14 years of tsunami. So you can see the actually the root of one of the, of course this building is not in use. That is why we are able to see and the power of that root is so high that it can actually break complete column and beam. Even if in fact we have seen a lot of cracks in slab as well. So if you leave a tree for 14 years, a small tree on, this was a building which was actually uh, washed out by tsunami wave. Uh, but that was the time when a tree has started to grow. After 14 years, you can see the tree which has taken up the complete wall, in fact structure as well. So that can be the faster of the tree. So uh, to that, uh, I'm not trying to show you all the pictures, but what I'm trying to tell you is you we travel to any city, any part of the country, you can see a lot of trees which are growing at the sewage lime on the top of the tree. These are the hotspots of deterioration. And uh, we have seen recently in Hyderabad, many uh, hostels, government hostels. We have also seen certain residential buildings which were old, 30 year old. They have started deterioration and we had to reach all this 
slabs so causes of deterioration uh, we can call them as a physical uh, physical chemical and mechanical but largely causes of deterioration depends on environmental effect and then it depends on functional requirement and of course it also depends on accidents suppose if a same structure which is built in gdmetla and the same structure is built in somewhere in secunderabad if there is an area which is uh, which is largely of a small scale industries and highly polluted if the same building is built then at this place uh, deterioration is much faster building which is nearer to the industrial estate will deteriorate much faster because the environment have certain acids and second thing without uh, whether the building is designed to take extra loads of communication towers or billboards we don't know but we install communication towers and billboards this is another major reason uh, where we have seen uh, vertical cracks in columns and deterioration of slabs as well and third of course accidents can be anything it can be a fair accident impact accident there can be another gas uh, blast of course there are a lot of other accidents natural or man made accidents these are all simple reasons for deterioration now <clears throat> to understand the structural health putting all these structures one can see the structures which might look really new because they were recently whitewashed or they can be recently painted but we would like to know what is the health of that structure so we have certain methods to know the structural health so traditional and we use a census and advanced of course like you see a railway man uh, they mean we're working from hundreds of years they take a hammer and hit a rail and they will tell whether there is a crack in the rail or not of course there are almost 2 lakh linemen in india who are working on but they just hit it on it they will know it that's why experience and the second is senses of course we hit and we hear the sound and we hit, we hit we will feel the hollow of course we do a lot of other things like senses and advanced uh, like sensors of course they are also based on similar understanding of our senses by all these things we can understand the structural health whenever we do the structural health analysis of any structure first and foremost thing is we do the visual inspection and the second thing is uh, we do the ndt testing and third we do the vibration analysis and fourth is data analysis but largely in india 18 to 90% as most of us actually do visual inspection ndt testing so what is one uh, one backlog of ndt testing is it is very localized we cannot tell the global behavior of the structure only based on ndt testing of course we can do numerical model and do we do the validation and we can tell but it is still a very localized whereas vibration analysis if we take an accelerometer or strain sensors any of the sensors we can tell the global behavior of the structure and of course we also do the data analysis of course i'll be i'll show you that as a case study so this is you, we all might have seen on internet that or through our studies or to case studies that ndt method for steel structures is still not uh, especially for structural engineering uh, steel structures we are not very accurate we are not very good at site they are excellent in laboratory like we do do liquid penetrant magnet particle ultrasonic testing eddy current radiographic of course we all do these things whether it is an internal void or is a crack or a corrosion or if there is small for gas line gas pipelines and all we use radiographic uh, testing to even if we have a small um, hole a minor hole so we do these kind of testing for steel structures but as i said still we have to improve a lot in uh, site whereas rcc like rebound hammer or ultra pulse velocity upv test or concrete core performometer or carbonation test largely we are good in ndt test for rcc structures yes we were able to Oh, tell what is the current condition ss condition of the rcc structures yes we are able to tell about that if we ask or if we wanted to know what exactly ndt is all about ndt is about we are trying to understand the integrity of the structural element we are trying to understand the strength of structural element we are trying to understand the material like steel inside in that so we are trying to extract that and by we 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 would like to know external and interior internal properties while we do the ndt testing core cut is one which is uh, semi ndt uh, semi destructive testing but it can give us the approximately 85% to 90% accurate of the concrete strength so like this picture which shows you the uh, thermal image thermal image we generally we are trying to do for heritage structures because we would like to know if there is a binding which is failed and there is a bone mass 
and this is skeleton as well so we can know all the internal internal structure of any structural element by entity testing that's what we always plan to do of course uh, in simple it's simple like uh, visual and then we do uh, mobile bridge inspection unit you know that we go around the structure we do visual inspection if required entity testing of the bridges and then whatever data we get we put it in a numerical model we do the analysis and we try to understand whether it is stable or what is the extra uh, which is needed for retrofitting and then we recommend retrofitting techniques whatever has to be either to see frp or concealment or extra thickness whatever that recommendation will give <clears throat> this is one of our uh, when we were doing a simple project with the uh, indian railways mass and structure especially robs we were trying to understand uh, the um, the pier and then this is one of the we were trying to remove the core of uh, pavement quality control with pqc of course there were a lot of cracks and then we were there. this is near one of the toll gate and of course this is another building which all these case studies i'll show you this is numerical model which was developed by the ndt testing whatever strength we got we incorporated in this numerical model and finally we recommend what has to be done either it has to be retrofitted with the conceal or concise or jacketing whatever method it requires so case studies all this is all about fundamental let me focus a little more on case studies this is uh, one of the beautiful bridge uh, you might see in vijayawada now uh, this is also called kankadurga uh, flyover in vijayawada this we have uh, visited long back i think and then uh, when we have visited you know uh, this bridge was actually uh, constructed by soman designed by acom But there was nothing wrong all about that that only thing which has happened uh, in this project was uh, they had a cast yard <clears throat> they had lot of wings which were already casted but they did not have a space to store those uh, wings these are all pre cast pre stressed wings so what has happened was immediately pre cast wings they have developed cracks at the bottom on the beam and you have a plate on top so this is a wing so this is you know spine and all that uh, and then these wings have generated cracks so you can see this uh, there is there are various wings almost we have uh, tested 83 to 86 such kind of precast structural elements which have undergone cracks uh, so of course we did upv and then we did not get any value which actually meant that the crack was taro or through crack most of all these cracks are through cracks okay so this is the cracks you can see this this is one of the few of the cracks you can see of course whenever we wanted to know about this pre stressed or um, this structural elements especially for dynamic load especially on the bridges whenever it has got structural cracks of course we don't recommend of course these were all rejected but question is why did they get this such kind of cracks was a question and then what we did we started inspecting that and then you can see this is another uh, structural element we got multiple cracks if there is only multiple cracks of course there are all tensile cracks which actually meant this structure or element either it has to been uh, uh, casted with a low grade concrete or it might have undergone a greater uh, tensile load which has led to the cracks so we went there and this is also at the anchoring so you can see this so they had some extra uh, they had they did not had space to store so they just brought the wings from somewhere and then just kept in the cast yard you can see this so the actual one which was designed to put all these uh, wings is this you can see this if you truly see this one this each wing has to be placed on a two vertical columns uh, with a bracings now when it is kept like that the total tensile force will be on the top okay so on the top tensile is on the top so you can also see the analysis part we also actually compared with numerical analysis and then what has happened in the site was tension was coming at the bottom it was bending at the bottom it was bending at the bottom because uh, this was supported you can see in the support it was supported in the middle but whereas in the cast yard they have supported at the ends so it became a simply supported now this is actually a cantilever member 
so tension is on the top when it is on the simply supported the tension is on the bottom so it was so optimally designed that it was not able to take its own load and actually led to the cracks of course all these elements were rejected that recast and then uh, they have to implement at that side so that was one of the reason so you can see this is on the top tension actually it was supposed to be uh, place layer it was actually uh, place like this case study 2 so that was all about that bridge and segments of course they were as i said they were removed and new segments were casted and they were actually incorporated at the site case study 2 uh, it was a very new bridge uh, of course i will not be able to tell the name of the bridge it was a very new bridge it was constructed around 12 months ago and then this is uh, this is a minor uh, uh, twin culvert bridge um these are all basic parameters as i said i'm trying to tell you the external uh, why we are trying to tell the uh, trying to understand the structural health so i'm trying to tell the overview of this uh, project so this is a 4 meter and uh, 16 meter is the total uh, span of the total span of the skull, two culverts and then of course this is the top view and this is the actual uh, bridge so they have called us that this bridge which was very new has actually started to have a vertical cracks so as usual we went for visual inspection and then uh, when we started visual inspection we have seen that uh, routinely the uh, structural uh, cracks would be horizontal but we have seen vertical so we thought there could be some reason for to that so we have seen and uh, we seen that cracks are there from the top to bottom and uh, we have uh, told that to have glasses immediately to know the cracks were active or not they kept the glasses no glass is one of the good metal they kept the glasses with an epoxy and he, 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 in within a week we have seen that glasses have broken which actually said the cracks are actually active and they are also propagating the width of the crack are also increasing the cracks width were from 0.8 mm to 1.25 uh, mm this is the range of cracks so we told them now we need to do the upv and then uh, once if upv gets we have to also have to take core and these were all glass because they kept this is 2020 in the last year during core and then uh, to our surprise what we have seen is we have started seeing the Uh, this bridge was open to the normal public and then we have seen um, how the vehicles are moving on the bridge so when we have seen moving on the bridge then we had small idea that uh, there is something which we have found is the cracks are exactly at such kind of a place where maximum wheel load was passing onto the uh, maximum wheel load was passing onto this um, this is the common wall this is a culvert uh, mid wall so which had a cracks so then immediately we have known actually this culvert would have been designed for the actual load but here because of even the moving loads the culvert the mid wall has actually had showing the cracks so immediately we told them to test for uh, we have to remove the core <clears throat> at least to, to get minimum 6 in this case to know the crack properties as well as the strength of the concrete and then uh, we did this is this is uh, this is the location of uh, different ndt test we have conducted and this is of course the wall pier and then you can see uh, so we have also removed a core upv certain upv values have not given any value to us which actually meant that crack is the row crack and the crack was only there and not mid wall and not on the abutments so you can see this crack this is and the crack width was higher in the mid of the wall which actually said that yes uh, it might be trying to it's not really buckling but it is happening like that crack width is higher so by the core from the core so 450 mm you can see that and then this is the core where we have removed you can see the crack so the crack is thorough crack and we did numerical modeling and uh, uh, from the numerical modeling and grade of course we have known that the grade of concrete has somewhere has to be has compromised uh, so 
M30 grade of concrete has, and when we tested it was 16 MPa. Of course, uh, it's reduced more than 50% in this case. So of course it will undergo certain cracking and the mid wall will definitely fail because the reduced strength is almost 16 MPa. And then of course we have, we did stress analysis, dot of numeric analysis, and of course to know where the cracks are there and exactly we wanted to retrofit. Since this is a culvert, uh, and water has to flow. We cannot uh, give sudden offsites, um, offsets inside that one. So we had to uh, recommend wall both the sides, so that the, we are trying to increase the thickness of the mid wall uh, proposed to new. So you can see this 300. We have uh, expanded to 450. So this is one of the recommendation, but largely the reason why the cracks were there is because of the low strength concrete, which was used at the site. First thing, second thing, we were able to know the cracks were at that place and because of the moving load, maximum load, which was coming at that place. And uh, wherever we have seen, this is, has happened in similar few other numbers of bridges as well. Of course, now all these bridges are retrofitted. Case study three, <clears throat> Well, of course, those are all, both the structures are RCC structures. One is pre-stressed and uh, another one is simple RCC structure. Let us see the third structure is railway. I've removed the station names. Whenever we do the visual inspection of this uh, railway bridges, of course, we don't, we won't see, we generally walk on these bridges and all, but we, this was given by Indian railways. So there are certain stations which were very <clears throat> used very less by few people. And we wanted to test it. So to our surprise, uh, there are sacrificial plates and RCC <coughs> staircases, which were almost deteriorated by 20 to 30 percent. Any time, if there was a maximum load which is coming, design load which was coming onto this bridge, could have been a disaster. In fact, after Mumbai's incident of FOB failed, all these <coughs> all these studies in India have been done for most of the railway FOBs and ROBs. So we did approximately 70 bridges. So you can see this. So the completely cover is has completely gone. And uh, this is the staircase. You can see the staircase steps. And you can see the <coughs> exposure of uh, uh, rods. And they were also, <coughs> the thickness of the rod has also reduced by 5 mm, 4 to 5 mm, which actually means that is very high. And certain rods, stirrups, when we have moved, they were actually, they broke. So which means the deterioration which was higher. Now, question is, we did not quantify what is the amount of damage here, but we have seen this is this is could have been a disaster if it is uh, loaded with its design load. And this is another bridge. Sometimes we don't see this, uh, but the bottom beams, uh, cords. So if you go nearer to that rod, and if you take a higher image resolution, which you can see in the right side, then the I-beam, the top uh, web and flange, flange is highly deteriorated and especially at the joints this could be disaster in steel structures one of the most important is a joint failure of joint can lead to a disaster so again here we did not uh, quantify we were trying to use uh, echometer and upv to understand what is the effective thickness which is left over after the corrosion and uh, <clears throat> this is few other joints which have failed. Of course, whatever parameters we find at the site, we try to incorporate in the numerical model to know uh, how much reduction of its load carrying capacity is there. We generate numerical models. So whatever entity test results we get, we put it incorporate in the numerical models to know what is the leftover uh, uh, strength. So this is uh, similarly, uh, Another so there are certain handrails which are completely deteriorated, corroded, and they were loose. And if you actually put a lot of weight on that, it will just uh, fall. So this is sacrificial plate. You can see <clears throat> this. Uh, these are the joints. Uh, those rods have become loose, and while we walk, there is a huge vibration on the uh, bridge as well. This is the kind of corrosion you see. So seems uh, from the bottom when we see they sometimes they might might look okay, but at extreme conditions uh, they can lead to a disaster. So this is uh, another uh, bridge where we have seen uh, complete. You can see this lost connection. So because of the corrosion, a complete joint has been lost. 
and you can see the slab panels on the top they are good with the uh, uh, tiles or uh, my tiles or concrete tiles even these tiles but at the bottom you can see there are a lot of cracks in the slab panels sometimes some of the stations are used by army people to take a lot of loads in such kind of cases yes uh, they could be disaster as i said so these are cards columns corrosion and uh, growing of plants uh, on this if it is um, a slab panels and these plants can actually make that structure to expand and this when i mean panels can expand and they can lead to the cracks of course after every season they'll remove but sometimes they are just left for one or two or three years that could be enough to crack all these panels okay this is accidentally hit uh this will of course i mean never there is an accidental hit actual loading carrying capacity will definitely reduce and it will fail in bending of course these are other members you can see this is just for information uh, this is not uh, of course now all these members which have been found by us given to the railways every every fob has been uh, rectified it has been retrofitted now they are all been done uh this is one thing i would like to show sometimes uh, we get a complaint that uh, it's not a complaint but sometimes we got from railways that saying that this fob is having a vibration uh even though there is a limit state of uh, vibration there is uh, not much of uh, uh, recommendations or a guidelines to check what is the permissible limit for uh, vibration that all have to be tested and actually they have to be compared with the natural frequencies and have to be seen then we can tell so this is one of the seismograph uh, which you can see there which have uh, kept on the pathway uh, <clears throat> that will record the vibration and maximum displacement of this one so based on that vibrations there is uh, we compare with the basic vibrations model analysis of structure and we can tell whether they are in the permissible limit or not of course we are trying to figure this is the paint we can also we can actually measure the paint thickness we can also measure the corrosion thickness uh, this is actually the seismo seismograph actually okay <clears throat> this is during one of few of our inspections so one uh, thing when we when we bought ultrasonic thickness when we bought ultrasonic thickness gauge meter uh, it has worked excellently very well in the laboratory but when we were trying to use in the site you can see this most of the gutters i section gutters uh, even in rob when we have a concrete deck on it these all i sections especially at the joints will get highly corroded there we were trying to measure the thickness so that we would like to remove the corrosion part and we would like to measure only the effective thickness which is there so that we can ca calculate the load carrying capacity so, but it's not that easy we have to use steel brush we have to remove all the corrosion and then we have to measure so even though these there are a lot of instruments which are available for rcc they seems to be okay but for steel structures we still have to go a way forward to do the ndt testing of course all these uh, fobs what we did is we have determined the existence of damage and of course we do the condition model uh, condition uh, mapping which actually tells the geometrical location damage location and the severity of damage and when we incorporate all those things in numerical model we were trying to tell the remaining life of the structure this is we were trying to predict that so that we did with indian railways and the fourth this is a very simple case study um, this is in uh, one of the residential structure in dilshuknagar in hyderabad uh, you can see this structure this is g plus 2 structure okay there was a small penthouse on the top so ground floor ground floor was constructed in 1983 and uh, when we went there uh, there were vertical cracks in the columns so they said they have built first floor and second floor and found a vertical cracks in the columns so we wanted to know what could have been the reason so they have extended the old structure in 2010 and uh, brick walls they have built in 2015 16 so they started to see some cracks in 2010 itself 2010 itself so which actually means that there was al already a load which was placed on the structure which led to the cracks which means which uh, the structure was given more load than its load carrying capacity so anyway so what has happened in this structure you can see this actually their parents were attached to the ground floor which was built in 1983 so they didn't want to demolish it so their parents want to stay and kids would like wanted to stay in first and second floor 
so what has happened uh this is the plan of the building of course this is a location of uh, columns and of course this is a building uh, let me directly get into what has happened so when we went there we have seen the structure is something like this we have seen completely deteriorated slab in fact most of the structures in 1983s and 1990s which were built in any city especially in hyderabad which i visited more than 15 20 structures they always say that roofs were leaking and they wanted to go for first floor and second floor they actually went many structures are there like that and then uh, when we have seen this is the slab condition this is the uh, there were cracks in the beams and there uh, there a lot of steel which was reinforcement so previous engineer has recommended them to do a uh, uh, cement so they wanted to remove the loose material and immediately put the cement there with fine sand and they kept it and uh, they have also seen the cracks in the columns so no question is why did we have a cracks in columns so we went there and we what we have seen is there are cracks in every column now question is either the columns have been deteriorated or there have been extra load which has been acted on the structure so of course we did all this uh, ultra pulse we bond propermo half cell crack with carbon everything we have did on this structure but uh, i'm not getting into these values but i would like to tell the reason for we seen 30% reduction in strength uh, from the rebound and core cutter but the reason for that one is not uh, this is carbonation so this is numerical model which we have developed but again i'm saying i'm not trying to get back into that statistics but i would like to definitely tell a reason so when they have built uh, when they have built the first floor what they did was since before building they have seen lot of uh, water seepage into the slab and since there were a lot of cracks in beams they thought beams were weak so they have had an extra beams on the inverted beams on the first floor and these beams of 150 mm thickness 5 5 inch uh, mm thickness so that thickness of beam was laid on top floor and then that completely it was filled with sand completely it was filled with sand i think that was an extra load which was kept and apart from all this uh, g place one structure so so they have 4 inch to 5 inch beam or you can see now here 4 inch to 5 inch beam which was laid all around the first floor inverted beams so 100 to 130 mm which we were able to see that so that could have been even 150 mm so around 100 to 130 mm we would have were, we were able to see and completely build was uh, this is the level right side you can see orange color that's the level and that was completely filled with sand of course the light uh cement and all they have filled it with that one so then we did all the ndt test and then we have actually compared so only the columns were trying to buckle so if there is a more load on the columns if columns are trying to buckle of course we have the vertical cracks in the columns and all those signs we have seen on uh, this structure and then of course uh, when we uh, movements of course we did lot of numerical analysis so when you do the actual strength we got three columns failure and with deterioration we have seen all these columns have failed so all these columns have shown that there will have been a buckling so we had to again restrengthen that uh, uh, encasement couple of them steel encasement concrete encasement and then uh, uh of course we have recommended them to go for uh, encasement now even though uh, this structure what i wanted to show even though this structure is has failed in the columns now the structure is actually has become a load bearing structure if there were no walls in the ground floor then the structure would have been definitely in a different uh, shape only because of the loads how could we tell because we have seen even shelves were undergoing uh, buckling the self vertical uh, separators have actually buckled and there were breaking that so that we have seen in last one year anyway retrofitting of this structure is being carried out so this is numerical model uh, and this is recommendation as i said uh, of course recommendation i am not trying to tell exactly what is the numbers but anybody who is interested of course they can always ask questions for so these methods which were uh, certain structures we recommended for retrofitting column encasement of course slab grid short creating the geo grid anyway uh, of course this is steel encasement this is not from the site of course 
now all those things are about the reality which is existing in and around us about the structures so most of the structures which are 20 or 30 year old if you go and assess the structures they would have been deteriorated if there is no proper maintenance if there is no proper maintenance okay so we wanted to do research to come up with a very simple uh, method or a technology to know the current condition of any structure so what did we do uh, this is way back uh, one of our research students ayram uh, he was doing his masters and we thought when we were traveling to aziz nagar uh, from darga uh, kondapur darga we've seen that structure uh, there were a lot of billboards which have fallen on the structure because of the huge winds there are a lot of failure cases in india where communication towers have failed or billboards have failed even very recently when here we have um, cyclone in goa and mumbai there are a lot of structures which have failed especially the billboards have made structures to undergo certain cracks in them so this is one of so we were interested to so we were interested uh, to model this building and we wanted to understand what could be the wind pressure and earthquake load for which the structures could withstand so most of the hyderabad structures where billboards are placed they are not actually designed for billboards or communication towers they are not but they are placed they are okay for a vertical but sometimes whenever we have the lateral forces at that point yes structures will undergo certain kind of a damage and uh, that need not be seen immediately but after three to four years yes it's not one apartment we visited at least to four to five apartments there are many apartments we heard but four to five apartments we did visit and we've seen vertical columns especially on the columns where telecommunication tower has been installed on the structure okay this is uh, published in one of the journal malaysian journal and the second most of us would like to know whether these cracks are structural cracks non structural cracks what is the length of the crack and width of the crack so in mahendra university uh, with the btech students we developed a small cell phone app where all you have to do is you need to just take a image of the crack of course it will not distinguish between a non structural and structural crack but it can tell us the length and width of the crack the beauty of the crack is if there is a crack then we can tell a lot about the structure if we know what kind of a crack it is we can tell whether the building is undergoing a uniform settlement non uniform settlement whether it is shear crack double crack bending crack and all crack can give us a lot of information about the structure so this is one of the app which we have and uh, this is piezo sensor uh, this might look like a very small gadget but it's a very instrumental especially when we test the bridges okay we are not trying we are not using right now because we still are under the uh, development of this technology where piezo sensors at a very large number can be used for bridge to analyze the bridge health of course this can also be used for live monitoring so, so this is we, we we use piezo sensors this is in our college uh, this is a small bridge which connects two buildings so we were trying to jump on it to give the excitement to the bridge and by the bridge frequency we wanted to tell what is the health of that one so of course this was also presented uh, in one of the conferences this is also published uh, paper so pamban railways is one of the first where scrc has installed accelerometer sensors to understand the health so today if we keep the sensors after one month what is the deterioration we can immediately tell with these sensors so this is installed by scrc and uh, there is one thing uh, this is also by sensors uh, there is a mystery behind the historical structures one such kind of a mystery what we have tried to understand was a box uh, uh, box one sandbox foundation or ancient sandbox technology this is called ancient sandbox technology the best uh, we all know the foundation as an rcc foundation but if a stone which is kept in the sandbox then these sandbox can make the superstructure earthquake resistant and also flood resistance that's the beauty of sandbox so they make into chambers they pour a lot of sand they put the stones huge weight and the stones settle down after some time and after that superstructure is constructed in a layers so that is what the same technology is used in ramappa temple of course same it is also used in thousand pillar temple as well of course this has also came in a newspaper when we visited with our team and we studied that of course we also published in 2018 this so sandbox technology without using concrete only sand and stone can make structures earthquake resistant 
so now slowly we started to see small kind of non uniform settlement in ramappa temple so that uh, uh, people have told that there is a 1 km there was a blasting of stones that could have led but anyway ngr is still testing on it so we have tried to make lot of boxes sands different types of sands and then we tested the axial emission we we tested what is the vibration which can be sent to the structure of course this is in 2018 and these days our technology and softwares are so good uh, that uh, <clears throat> this is very recently we presented in europe this is our 1000 pillar temple and uh, with an image we just need to take image from the camera and then from that image we can generate this 3d model of that column so each thing has been modeled and you can see here each column has been very precisely modeled to almost a uh, couple of mm accuracy we just wanted to know the stability of uh, that structure it's a most stable structure stone structures are more stable structures but we just wanted to answer one of the mystery which is still existing in thousand pillar temple which this is still in the process but our softwares fem models fem softwares can give us uh fm software can give us a lot of uh, information because we are so precise so geometry is not only to tell certain heritage or a story or a certain value of which was existing or tradition which was existing in that place but the geometry was also planned in such a way that it could resist lateral and vertical forces so this is one thing and of course we whenever we want when we were doing fob test we wanted to test with uh, laboratory models we generally develop laboratory models and put sensors and we would like to find the frequency and we compare with the numerical model that's how we always do our validation so we do the validation so this is uh, one of the this is one of the test we did in uh, japan and uh, in 2017 this is structural health assessment of the bridge so this is yokohama national university this is steel bridge and this is with an rcc deck so we use sensors so this is a wireless sensor which is developed by sonus x01 and this is developed in university of tokyo and then of course the range of this is plus r 5g of course if you understand it quick that's a vibration it can take so what i'm saying is when we have this bridge we just have to put the sensors on the bridge without anything just put the just put the wireless sensor there this is an accelerometer and then we can sit at the end of the bridge and we can record all the uh, vibrations but how do you give vibration so either you can drop a weight from some height 1 meter or 2 meter or this is one of my friend who was hitting with a rubber hammer we don't hit with a steel either we use rubber hammer or a wooden hammer to excite the structure and it will vibrate uh vibrate and these vibrations are recorded vibrations are recorded and second thing we can actually also jump jump on that one so these vibrations are recorded and we compare with the ansys model so this is ansys model fem model and then we were uh, these are the results which we acquired from the site from the accidents so the accuracy of the numerical model and uh, at the site where almost we were we were able to match more than 85% of course when we increased uh, for frequency matching analysis the error is only 0.36 for damping it is 60 but we when we increase the number of sensors we were actually also were able to match with the damping as well so it depends on number of sensors and exactly location of sensors when we keep on the bridge we can exactly get the bridge parameters like mass and damping and stiffness these are the three important parameters which will uh, define the behavior of any bridge so this we we did in uh, japan and uh, future uh will definitely is all about sensors especially the major bridges uh, like most of major bridges right now in india are uh, inhibited with these sensors during the construction and they will tell us what is the strength which each structure is attaining what is the tension which is attained in cable straight bridges so all this will be kept so indian railways is one of them which is trying to do that and we are trying to uh, with the help of uh, kdm consulting company we are trying to give such technology to indian railways so uh, this is accelerometer sensors which we bought it from usa and right now we are using for live monitoring of one of the bridge so this is called rail structure interaction and uh, i think there are very few people very 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 few people maybe four or five 
who are actually trying to do such kind of studies and we are one of them uh, who are trying to do so one is optical fibers and second is accelerometers so this is one of the bridge near uh, gulbarga navedgi so we have uh, kdm mahendra university and we have indian railways so we are doing the live monitoring this is very two days back we did uh, another test on it uh, this is uh, the bridge the i did not tell what exactly rsi is see uh, the lo long back we used to have a rail uh, 25 minutes or 50 minutes right now the rail are completely weld and they are continuous they are called continuous weld rails or long weld rails during this long weld rails and continuous weld rails because of thermal expansion and contraction they actually pass huge amount of forces even to the piers so railways wanted to know what is the amount of force which is transformed from the rail to sleeper sleeper to the deck deck to the pier so we have kept all the sensors for the each element and we were trying to understand the amount of force which is transferred to the pier so this is you can see the people jumping on the bridge and this is one of the research student who is actually working on the recordings the acceleration recordings and you can see this is a duct and this is the we did uh, whenever we do this test i we do in the peak winter because it's a minimum temperature and we also do it in the peak summer that's what we did a few days back so peak winter in the midnight and peak summer in the during the afternoon so we do this, this testing to see uh, the kind of stresses strains and deformations in the bridge using only wireless accelerometers the whole setup will take a few hours of time 3 to 4 hours and then everything so this is right side Uh, top you were i can see the train and we were trying to test on the rail stress and we have temperature sensors and then uh, bottom right side you can see the sensor which is kept in the gutter so this is i gutter oh so now this is the free uh, analysis we can so we are trying to build our own web where we can uh, all, we can uh, employ deploy different types of sensors into one place and we can try to find the frequencies and try to match or try to know the condition of this bridge so this is what is the current research work which uh, we are uh, doing at uh, our university the help of kdm so this is uh, uh, the whole team from the kdm and railways uh, which we did for testing so all through the journey uh, what i was trying to talk about is uh, is india uh, safe or is it healthy in terms of structural so our indian structures healthy is one question mark we had that was the first thing and uh, when we had this question question is when structures are different types there are steel there are stone there are rcc there are bamboo there are mud so there have to be certain method where we can assess the health of these structures so we started our journey in that way in that way we have contributed in terms of rcc steel and heritage we still have to go for bamboo and mud it will take some more time for us so when we were trying to do ndt testing we found lot of limitations with ndt testing so we wanted some other technology which we can add to this so that we can actually quantify the amount of damage or deterioration of any structure given structure so one 2017 i went to japan when we were sponsored to japan to do this study then where i have found that these sensors could be one of the solution so we brought this technology to india now it is there in few companies a few places so we are one of them maybe four or five we are one of them who are uh, trying to do the assessment and live monitor of bridges uh, many bridges so in fact uh, oh, what is the keystone of all this presentation is all about is understanding structural health is one thing but the big, bigger keystone is uh, connecting academia with industry because industry has got a lot of challenges and academia is very good certain academy are very good uh, have lot of funds to do research so if energy can be kept there as a keystone of course we can give a very good uh, a contribution to the society so in visual we do the symptoms when we do the ndt testing we will find the durability and when we do the numerical analysis we will tell about stability of course when we do rehabilitation or retrofitting we enhance the current existing structure so that we we increase the life span of the structures if structural health assessment is done much prior and if it is known lot of money can be saved lot of money can be saved so that's one thing from this thing okay so i would like i i don't I don't want to prolong much 
but uh, before uh, closing my seminar i would like to definitely acknowledge uh, uh, my team this is uh, our team so me myself and uh, another faculty from computer science we have uh, rakesh saram prasanna vivek chetanya swamshayit gaur then they are all part of our research team apart from kdm then they are mishwa they are all <coughs> have contributed to all our understanding so it's been a very good journey in fact uh, we always think we just started our journey in this health assessment of structures uh, maybe 400 or 500 bridges we have structures we have we are still trying to do or incorporate artificial intelligence in that so very recently we have published and we have presented in europe how to use ai uh, to tell the health assessment of structure but i didn't want to prolong this presentation for a long time didn't want, want to get you bored so i'm stopping here so definitely would like to acknowledge the companies which uh, have given a breakthrough in this field uh, kdm <clears throat> which has sponsored us a good amount to the mahindra university to take health assessment and health monitoring with using of sensors so nvln is another company which with whom we have started our journey in assessment and also retrofitting of uh, residential and uh, bridges so there is also varshita who has been part in helping us and vasamaha avasmaha is an architects which were helping us in uh, assessment of heritage structures so with this uh, i would like to uh, officially close uh, uh, my session if there are any questions uh, you can please uh, write it down or you can ask most welcome i'll good take up and able to answer that so we always feel uh, that this is not the end of my presentation but i would just likely to tell that this uh, journey has just a begin so a special uh, i would like to uh, thank all my teammates and special thanks to qcrate uh, kaushik garu for giving this opportunity to share whatever we have been doing from past few years with you all thank you so much uh, and also thank you so much for your patience Uh, hello yeah anjali any questions there kaushika hello uh, sir uh, anjali madam any questions are there four or five questions can you um, read out madam anjali madam uh, yes sir i'll read out Uh, first question is what is the minimum and maximum thickness of glass that can be used to know the crack development that was asked by vengadesh r i think uh, there is uh, see there are uh, engineered glass and hard glass uh, mm. both of them what we have used is around uh, 3 mm so when we tell definitely when we ask this uh, crack glasses they are that's in standard either you get in hard glass or engineered glass they range from 3 to 5 mm less than that what will happen is uh, if, if you have a 1 mm less than that they'll generally even a break or small vibration so do you don't want to that so there has to be minimum vibration or minimum propagation of that crack so that we actually understand the crack is active so 3 mm should be good for engineered glass okay thank you sir so now the next question is how can we repair the ceiling of a slab that has concrete cover removed with exposed bars showing signs of corrosion uh, uh actually i have shown one of the picture uh, right now it depends on the uh, amount or deterioration of the steel so we have been using geo grid uh, with a short grid and that has given an excellent uh, results so but what we have to do is first of all we have to remove all the corroded part but in some cases if the corrosion is only to the few rods then we cut that we weld a new rod there and we do the normal uh, cover part but if it is major then we use geo grid and a short grid that is really very good if it is a major deterioration of the slab okay thank you sir uh, sir the next question is is sensors used in the case study commercially available Yes, yes, very much. So, uh, uh, actually, uh, we bought it from US, and uh, there are. This is one kind of a sensor. In fact, we are also trying from three different uh, companies so that we would like to see uh, the sensor. So they are available. So either you get from Germany, France, US, and all, 
and uh, india has just started india has just started and we are in the process of validating those sensors iit kanpur iit karakpur they are validating that so once that is done i think we can have them but right now uh, indian railways or uh, our clients would like to have standard which is already validated so we are getting it from uh, us the next sensor we are getting it from france as they are available online you can search them and most of the sensors cost from 60000 to 1.5 lakh each sensor uh okay sir thank you the next one is what are the maintenance strategies for heritage buildings even in present structures please suggest the methodology of proper maintenance for better life cycle most of the structures by our observation we have seen only major observation i have not shown you the fully deteriorated structures the major corruption we have seen in water you see the building from water stagnant of course you can uh, increase the life span of structure by many folds so we have seen lot of hostel blocks lot of lot, lot of structures residential structures where water has been stagnant and fully deteriorated you just see that there is no water stagnant anywhere of course we can increase apart from the construction like honeycomb and all that that is removed that yes this is good only the water uh okay sir thank you the next one is what is your opinion on frp wrapping and laminates used for retrofit uh, uh, wherever there is a crunch of space uh, frp frp or glass frp they are all very good of course uh, uh, we have have also suggested many companies are doing frp constraints especially there is a crunch of space they are very good they are very good tensile so of course whenever they are uh, incorporated at the site they will actually see the functioning of the structure and they also see the kind of temperature the structure will undergo functioning is one of the most important but they are good they are good frp is currently used in most of the bridge piers uh, okay sir sir we last one more question that is what are the remedies that could be done if friction caused differential shrinking i did not get you please can you so what are the remedies that could be done if deflection caused differential shrinkage i think there is a small disturbance remedies uh, hello, uh, remedies sir? sir yes yes i got a differential uh, differential there is a deformation we are talking about because of uh, shrinkage madam maybe uh, yes, doctor dilip garu may not be hearing properly all the things so we can send the question so we we'll close the question answer session we can send the questions to him later yes okay yes okay yeah. okay sir okay good evening friends i am shelly fernandez we have come to the end of a, another very interesting topic which uh, also was the need of the day understanding structural health in india by dr venkata dilip kumar uh, it was very interesting uh, as you all know that every monsoon is very tough time for uh, civil engineers as the news comes out from some one or the other city that high rise buildings is collapsing actually so in this context uh, today's uh, topic was Uh, very much interesting, uh, showing both the uh, the problems and solutions. Thank you very much, Dr. Vakatesha Dilip Kumar, for your excellent and knowledgeable presentation. He has covered very basic reasons for the collapses and deterioration of structures, and, and also added to the very. It was very, made it very interesting by giving actual case studies demonstrated by the speaker was very interesting, which showed the problem and its solutions actually. his talks was very lively and vibrant kept the audience glued to the webinar thank you very much sir i thank you thank all you, thank you so much thank you sir i thank all the participants who had spared a valuable time to attend the duplicate webinar series actually i am shelly fernandez again signing off till we meet for the next session uh, we'll rejoin rejoin you with a new topic thank you very much thank you sir thank you thank you thank you so much 
so we close the session yes sir yes sir yes sir.